I want to bring in now John Herbst, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, to talk more about what Zelensky just said there. Um, I think it is a message of caution because he is calling on the world now, requiring the world to react and take action in terms of sending more weaponry, sending more tanks, calling for a tribunal military um, to address the crimes that are happening. Um, Give me a sense of how you hear his words now, almost a year after Russia invaded. Look, um, Ukraine has been facing a savage assault from Russia. Um, the Russian assault has failed on the battlefield, so they've taken the attack to Ukrainian cities, to Ukrainian energy infrastructure. Uh, the way to help Ukraine, and for that matter, the way to defend the United States and Europe from Russian aggression is to give Ukraine the weapons necessary to defeat the Russians on the battlefield. There's good news this week. The Brits are sending tanks. It looks like Europeans are sending tanks. And last week, the United States and others in Europe sent armored personnel carriers. Um, all good news, but the United States should lead the way in sending long, longer range artillery, which would stop the Russian offensive currently in the northeast of Ukraine and would enable Ukraine to take territory back in the south and bring this war to an end. This is what Ukraine desperately needs, and this is what American interests require, too. The audience, obviously, all of the networks taking his speech nationally here, but the audience there at the Economic Forum is made up of our world's economic leaders. There are a lot of CEOs. Uh, there is a lot of power and influence in that audience. Why this message now to this group? Look, as you say, this is an influential group. This is a chance for Zelensky to make his case for more support from the West. He's receiving substantial support, but it could be more. And I can tell you, I'm here in Davos. I was not in the main hall where the speech was um, seen by the world leaders, but I was in an alternate location. I can tell you the reaction here is largely positive. Let me ask you, because he addressed Crimea decades ago, annexed by Russia, and he said we cannot repeat the mistakes of the past. So what does history teach us in this moment about the necessary action? Um, it's actually pretty simple, but extremely important. Putin is pursuing an aggressive foreign policy, not just to subjugate Ukraine, but to reestablish Moscow's influence in the entire space of the former Soviet Union. What that means is Putin has designs to go beyond Ukraine. They include our NATO allies, who used to be part of the Soviet Union, the three Baltic states. They include over half a dozen former Warsaw Pact states. Putin needs to be stopped in Ukraine. That's the lesson of history. So we, need, we have a reasonably strong Western response. It needs to become a resolutely strong. And that's what he is pleading for, properly so. That's what American interests require. But is it enough? Is it enough to send tanks? Is it enough to send extra weaponry, to send the Patriot missile systems and let Ukraine fight this war on its own? I am not advocating American troops be used. I, I believe that the, um, the ability of the Ukrainian military we've already seen, if we send them not just the tanks, not just the Patriots, but also the longer range missiles, and we send them an adequate quantity, Putin will be defeated in Ukraine. Ukraine will be able to stop the so-called land bridge, which, set, which connects Russia all the way to Crimea by making an offensive in the south. And Russian troops will have to pull out of mainland Ukraine. And Putin will have a very difficult time supplying his troops and, for that matter, people in Crimea. This is the smart way to deal with Kremlin aggression by more sophisticated, especially American weaponry. The Biden administration has to become a little bit um, bolder in its policy to meet American interests. Let's say what you just laid out there happens. Uh, Putin retreats. He does not see the advances that he wants in Ukraine. Then what? Are you confident that he doesn't take another more aggressive step? Uh, one good thing, which is rarely commented upon, is that in this war in Ukraine, uh, as much as 50% of Moscow's conventional military capacity has been destroyed. That's an extraordinary investment in American and Western security. The assistance we give to Ukraine is about 6% of our defense budget, the equivalent of 6%. For that, we've helped destroy, again, half the conventional resources of our second most dangerous adversary. Um, if Ukraine gets the additional weapons and completely routes the Russians in Ukraine, 
it would be very hard for Putin to recover. And in fact, such a defeat may persuade people in Moscow to pursue a peaceful rather than an aggressive foreign policy. Zelensky is calling for decisive action from the civilized world. Uh, John Herps, former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, thank you for your time this morning joining us from Davos, Switzerland. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.